What I will try now to demonstrate would be more the technique which we use for a, a single veneer. Because the technique, you have to do a veneer because the tooth was broken, you have a very large class 4 cavities on each side, the tooth has been already retreated several times and you realize that you won't be able to get a perfect result just by doing uh, or resurfacing the existing restoration. So basically you think the only way to get a good result is now to do a veneering technique, but neighboring teeth, which are pretty much intact, have a lot more uh, palisades. Maybe they have a little bit more chroma in the cervical. Maybe they have a couple of white spots. They are not looking, so to speak, as perfect as the veneer which I have now uh, placed on the mouse. So what is the option? If I use the same technique, I will end up with something which is probably more perfect, will look much more uniform and perfect, than the existing teeth. So what is the, what are, which are the options? Either to go with a classical ceramic porcelain veneer, ceramic or porcelain veneer with all possible characterization, or can we go one step further with this technique? And the answer is that with a little bit of experience, but once again, this is more the advanced use of this uh, system, we can do some internal characterization. And I would like to, to show you briefly how we need to proceed. There are a few tricks which we need to know. And if we pay attention to this, we can, uh, we can, we can individualize also uh, to a certain point the color and, and the shade of those veneers. If we want to make the incisal edge, if we want to create some incisal halo, we will have to we will have to to grind a little bit inside the veneer to create a groove into which the color will stay because the risk is that if you try to do that with us having uh, with us having uh, created that groove the color might spread and you won't get uh, you won't get a good uh, you won't get a good result so now I will, I will create a groove with my fine diamonds. And this blue halo should not be should not be too far from the inside of the edge, because otherwise it won't really look good. Okay. If you want to create uh, small uh, white lines, which we sometimes see, or white uh, yeah spots. And that's enough. That's enough. I will take now a little bit of bond because I need first to, when I've done this, I will go and sandblast the veneer with normally 25 microns aluminum oxide with relatively low pressure, not more than two bars. And now I need to apply the color. I'm using here uh, a more intense color. But you need to use very, very teeny amounts. And you can use the uh, you can use the micro brush to take away some excess if you're not happy. Okay, and we'll quickly light cure. I would just fix the shade in that spot and turn the veneer. 
to take a little bit of white. I'm, I'm not saying that this is something to do on each case, absolutely not. Okay, we can polymerize. Oh, maybe this time, yeah, perfect. And now a little bit of yellow to get a little bit more chroma. But this I will probably reduce a little bit. Okay, we like you once again, and I hope I haven't exaggerated uh, this characterization. Okay, so now I'm ready to go and inject a little bit of material. And, of course, this will give the veneer a lot more color. So you will see that it will look very different from the previous one. I will quickly, quickly place again the strip so that I don't bring now, I don't bring any I don't put any on cured resin or anything on the surface of the other veneer. That's very important. Never go with the next veneer without protecting the previous one because the bonding otherwise, everything will come, and especially if you have a little bit of bonding or composite, you might really contaminate the surface of your veneer. Um, this is probably not really appropriate. Now it is in place. And I think that I can pretty much take away on the distal, the matrix. This will also give me access to the inside ledge. I'm fine. You see now the insider characterization. It's looking really great. But be careful because you don't need that it's false a palisance halo. Because it's not uh, it's not that every choose shows that kind of a palisant halo. If you if you exaggerate and you um, let's say you do that on every single case, then uh, you might end up with a, a restoration which doesn't fit with uh, you know, the, the neighboring teeth. So all this needs to be, of course, uh, realized according to uh, the um, color characteristics of neighboring teeth. Would you go for a full set of veneers? I would say this is probably very nice if you, if you can uh, produce this kind of characterization. And I will go quickly with the uh, finishing of my restoration and let's take now uh, because this one is a little bit already used and worn down And I will be careful and and probably place again the, the strip when I do that so that I don't touch and I do not do anything which will uh, 
uh, which will eventually damage the surface of the other juice. Repolishing. Okay, you have this wonderful glossy surface. So another question is, do we have any chance to, to come back to something similar after doing some uh, correction on the surface? Let's find out. I will go very quickly. And I will do here maybe Once again, I take a little bit of bonding. Th the same rule uh, does apply anyway to this uh, procedure that I, I will just try to see if I, maybe I need to do a little bit more on the distal. That's enough. The idea is simply to demonstrate that we can repolish, possibly uh, characterize also morphologically the. Uh, I want to just to do uh, increase a little bit the indentation here. And I can go. Now clean the, clean the model with our cleaning, polishing, cleaning and polishing brush. I will try to show you both veneer together. So you see that we have more chroma. We have, of course. Uh, a lot of uh, a lot of palisades in this uh, well lateral insider. Once again, it is not it is not necessarily needed. I would just need to go and do my my, my interproximal polishing, which I have just started but not really completed. But if we need to repolish a veneer surface, it is possible. It is not needed. It is not recommended. But basically, um, there are a lot of options, including the advanced some of those advanced techniques for cementation. As a conclusion, I hope I've been able to demonstrate the advantages of this technique. Uh, we have a few differences between this technique and a conventional porcelain veneer technique, which is uh, made over two sessions with uh, the restorations produced in the lab, but of course perfectly adapted to your preparation because here you will have to do a little bit of preparation also on the, on the side of the veneer. You need to prep on the tooth, but in order to minimize the amount of tissue removal, we'll also do some corrections on the veneer side, which is something a little different from your classical veneering technique. As well, before you move to the second veneer placement, uh, you need to do a little bit of finishing in the proximal, maybe also in the cervical, but except that 
you should find yourself relatively comfortable with this technique because most of the steps which you are used to apply for either a direct or classical indirect porcelain veneer techniques are included in this system. Thank you very much for your attention.